I'm here with Matthew Sullivan, uh, the CEO of Quantum RE, an equity sharing company, and they have a very innovative use of the blockchain in that business of financing homes. Welcome, Matthew. Thank you for joining us here. Thank you for having me on, Martin. It's a pleasure to meet you. Okay, so how do you, so first of all, what is the core business model of what you're doing? And, uh, and then how does the blockchain help you in financing people to to, to get uh, use the equity of their of their homes. Okay, well, let's start by explaining the problem that we solve. Yeah, if you're a homeowner and you have equity in your property, the only way that you can unlock the equity is by borrowing more money. The basic idea is uh, we have a home and that's very valuable, and uh, that is people can uh, can use that as a security, as kind of like a deposit to get money out. So they can borrow. That's, against... that's the traditional approach. Yes. But we don't do that. So uh -huh. we're not lenders. What we are is we are investors. So we say to you as a homeowner, in exchange for liquidity, so we'll give you some cash today. And we'll do that in exchange for a share of the equity in your property which you owe us, but don't have to pay us for 10 years. So in other words, you're selling a share of the future value of your property in exchange for cash today. Oh, so for example, you buy, let's say somebody has a house and you buy like 10% of that house. Exactly, but we're not going on title as owners. So ah. it's an option agreement. So in that equation with the homeowner, The homeowner is receiving capital or cash in exchange for a share of the property. So they're selling some of their future asset in exchange for cash today. Big question is, where does that cash come from? Well, it comes from an investor. So at the moment, those investors are all institutions. So this is a great way for institutions to get a share of owner occupied properties and that means they don't have to worry about renting or owning or maintaining the property because the owner does that they get a share of the future appreciation Interesting. So, so our... instead of that that is a great idea actually because instead of if if some institutions are interested to buy themselves into the real estate market and want to benefit from that but do not want to get into the rental business and, and maintaining business instead of buying one house Uh, in California, let's say, they buy 10% of 10 houses. They have the same investment into the real estate market. And I mean, if I, I'm, I'm still 90%, uh, I'm actually the full owner of the house and 90% of the value is my, I will take care of that house. So for yes. the investor, uh, it's you a guarantee can. that the house is well, well taken care of and they can benefit from from investing in the real estate market, right? Is that how yes, it works? Yes, that, that is exactly how it works. So, so, right. We said earlier that these investments are attractive and we can see why they're attractive to institutions. And the people in this space only work with institutions. So normally, if you want to invest in a home equity investment, you've got to come up with a, about a hundred million dollars typically, which is your minimum sort of commitment. So what our platform does, and this is how we use the blockchain, we take each one of those home equity investments that we create. So we are We originate them, we create those. We put that into an entity, a legal structure that allows you to um, uh, split that legal structure up by way of shares and sell those shares to investors. So using blockchain, what we do is we keep track of who owns each one of those shares. And because blockchain is a very scalable, reliable ledger technology in its simplest form is ideally suited to keeping track of who owns what in a way that can be trusted and scaled and distributed. So what that means is we can take someone's home, we can create uh, an asset based on the equity in their property. The homeowner's happy because they've got some cash. That asset can then be Um, cut into tiny fractions because if we issue shares at ten dollars a go and the investment is say you know hundred thousand dollars then you've got thousands of shares representing an indivisible piece of that asset because effectively it's a it's a non-fungible token um, and people who own a share of that 
have a share of something that has value and that value is predictable and demonstrable, demonstrable um, and can be proven. In other words, if you get an appraisal on that property, you know what the property is worth, you know what the home equity investment is going to give you when that homeowner sells. You've got a share of something that has real value because it's real estate. So if I can imagine it like this, I have I have a house, let's say, as an example, and, and that house is worth, you know, in California, let's say it's worth a million dollars. Now, I want to keep 90 percent of that equity, but I want some cash out to do other interesting things. Maybe I don't know. I want to build a pool. Or I want to go on vacation. So I say, hey, Matthew, I want to share 10 percent of that equity with you um, and you will give me one hundred thousand dollars in cash. So of the of the one Correct. million, I get one hundred thousand right. in, yes. in cash. Then you take the 100,000 and you cut it in small pieces. Let's say for simplicity reasons, to make the math easier, you cut it in $100 pieces. So yes. you have 1,000 $100 pieces. And that's what basically you mint on the blockchain. Correct. And then you sell these $100 pieces to investors. They can be institutional or private or who can who can buy this, these pieces of my, of my, of my home value. And that's the beauty. It's anybody. Anyone um, will be able to invest, whether they're, you know, it, it's a real sort of opening up to Main Street. So not only will you be able to invest, you'll be able to trade. So you have something that is represented by a token. That thing that you have is a piece of that agreement, which is secured by a lien on physical real estate. Um, so you know that you've actually got something that has this provenance all the way through. You can buy that on our platform, hold it, and you will be able to sell it. So you'll be able to take that and say, I think it's gone up by a certain percentage because property values have gone up and I'd like to get some money back. So you could sell some or all of your shares or your tokens, assuming that there's a willing buyer on the other side. So we're creating a two-way marketplace that... Uh, it's represented by a token. So you know that um, that when your um, uh, exchange goes from you know buyer to seller, that is recorded and printed on a blockchain somewhere that anyone can see, which proves that transaction has happened and maintains that um, that sort of unchangeable record of the ownership moving from from a buyer to a seller. Interesting. So the same as an analogy to the NFT application of the blockchain, the non-fungible token, if I have an art piece and I buy myself $10 of this $100 million art piece and I basically buy three pixels. Anyways, I, <laughs> that's what they do, right? They pixelate these art pieces and they sell them by small pieces. So basically I could buy, I don't know, $7 of my neighbor's house if he, is, if he or she is, is willing to, to share the equity. Then I would say, yes. like, hey, I, yeah. In, in very simple terms, yes. You're, I mean, there's there's obviously some sort of nuances there. That you're actually not buying a share of their house. You're buying yeah. a share of the, the. But you don't really want the house, do you? You want no. um, you want the upside. You want the yeah. the increase in value that that house is going to deliver. Um, the same that's what I do with the same one I do when I buy three pixels of an NFT. Yeah, you I don't mean, want I don't... The pixels. I mean, yeah, you can't do much <laughs> with three pixels. You want it's the increase in value that you're. It's a bit like when you buy a drill. You don't actually want to buy the drill. You want to buy the hole it makes. So right. that's that's the yeah, same sort of analogy. Interesting. Well, that is a that's an, a very innovative application of the blockchain. Congratulations. So, so which you. blockchain do you use? Is it a is it what is think Ethereum or Cardano? Is it a private or is it? Is no, it no, no. It's not. It's and, and again, we use uh, Algorand. Um, oh, yes, and Algorand. the reason the reason we use Algorand is because Algorand has. Um, a protocol called the Algorand Standard Asset, which is really a type of um, it's a, a type of token structure that already has inbuilt as part of the protocol itself the things that we need to be able to meet securities regulations. For example, if you lose your shares because you can't remember your private key, for example, that's okay because we can destroy the ones and give you some new ones, which you can't get, you know, it doesn't happen in, in sort of in most crypto uh, and, and things like um, 
There are other protections built in that allow it to be compliant with securities regulations. Other things you've got to take into account, how much does it cost? A so gas fee is very important. That's why Ethereum is you know, never uh, really uh, attractive for these types of um, scenarios where you've got lots of micro transactions potentially. See, we don't rely on the blockchain. What we do is we do everything behind the scenes and then print the transaction onto the blockchain. And so that acts as our sort of yes. you know, the, the, our, our trade reference, which um, right. is you know which which is uh, you know un unchangeable. Yes, now it's an amazing application of how you can use uh, this digital property assignment in order to solve a very ancient problem. How can we really have the market mediate between supply and demand of who owns what kind of land? And that is fantastic. Yeah. And, and what you're doing is you're actually, if you think about the amount of equity as an asset class, it's a 20, you know, I think the figure is 23, 24 trillion dollars. That's actually locked as an asset class that is currently not being traded. It's not being accessed. So right. that could have all sorts of positive implications for the economy where, uh, you know, the investors are winning, but, but also homeowners win and, and they go and spend their money. So hopefully that, that uh, you know, you know, but, you know, puts the economy. There's all sorts of positive benefits that I think, in scale, this could this could bring. Yes, because it's a it's a huge uh, amount of capital that's locked and unused. And the definition of a capitalistic system that we are in in our Western economies is you need you need capital in order to make capital. So to unlock this capital, thanks to the blockchain, is an amazing idea. Congratulations! Fantastic. It's very kind. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Matthew, thank you very much for sharing with us here in our class. Um, we, we hope we're looking forward to seeing more innovations in the future. And um, thanks for joining us here as a guest lecturer. It's my pleasure. We'll keep you posted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much.